Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1993 comedy Ernest Rides Again. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Brock for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal or through other uh, sources. I have the links in the video description down below, and I will try to get to them as soon as I possibly can. Now, Ernest Rides Again is the sixth film in the Ernest franchise. And at this point, it was really starting to showcase the uh, law of diminished returns in effect. It didn't help that this is the first Ernest film that was made for a really low budget and was essentially an independent film because the, the backing of a major studio in Disney uh, was now uh, taken away from this franchise because of the disappointing box office of uh, Scared Stupid. So Disney decided to uh, wash their hands clean of the Ernest franchise. So then it became more of an independent thing that was really just a passion project of John Cherry and other investors. And... You could really tell like the lack of that extra budget makes it so there really isn't as much polish. And I think it exposes Cherry's limitations as a director more. And it's a shame because I, I really wish that Scared Stupid did better because then we might have been able to get a moderately budgeted sci-fi parody with Ernest where he's uh, in the middle of this decently budgeted uh sci-fi b movie uh think of that movie space invaders but then throw Ernest in there i think that could have been a lot of fun there was a lot of potential to do like a sci-fi Ernest film and instead things just are really uh limited with this film like even the title just seems like it's limited and seems off compared to the other films in the series at this point. Ernest Rides Again, like even the title is lame. Like it doesn't really explain the plot of the film. It doesn't really tie into what you know or what you have been used to with Ernest up until this point. And I guess it works kind of because he rides a cannon at one point in this movie. But other than that, I, I really don't... I don't get the title. And so that's not a good start. And then you have the direction by John Cherry. And like I said, he shows his limitations more here because he doesn't have a bigger budget to work with that he can utilize and use the talents of other second unit directors and other, uh, other people, uh, who are doing the, uh, uh, other little uh, jobs or other little aspects of a film production. He doesn't have access to the best cinematographers. He doesn't have access to the best uh, technical uh, uh, advisors or the best uh, possible people in terms of effects or a lot of these other things. So he's got to really rely solely on himself. And I really didn't feel that he, at this point in his career, or, or really, honestly, at any point, had really established himself as a director who was good enough to be able to um, ride on his own. He needed he needed some help, and that's that's you know that's not a knock against him. I mean, there are other directors who uh, who start out like that, but then as they continue on throughout their career, they become more reliable and learn more tricks and, and become better directors and they can hold their own. But I never really got that with John Cherry. It just seemed like as this series went on and he directed more of these films, he got more and more exposed as a director and his, the direction in, in these earnest films became more flat and became more uninspired and, made me question whether or not he was even the one responsible for uh, the the stylized and, and rather efficient look of something like Scared Stupid. And maybe it was the budget. Maybe it was the lack of the budget. But a, a truly accomplished filmmaker can work with their limitations and still show their talent. 
in an equal fashion. And I just didn't really get that from John Cherry in this film or honestly in any of the other Ernest films that he did after Scared Stupid. And I'm not going to say that it's a complete loss in terms of the direction. No, I, I think it's a, a multitude or multiple steps down in quality. But there are some moments where it works. But I think in a lot of ways it works mainly due to Jim Varney and not really to what John Cherry is bringing to the film, which makes me really wonder what these Ernest sequels would have been like if you just got somebody else. You hired a new director a fresh face, somebody who's willing to take some chances, be a little more risky with things. Instead of John Cherry, who at this point had just been so firmly entrenched in this Ernest franchise that things had genuinely started to get stale when it comes to the direction of this character. It's one of those things where, yes, his dynamic with Jim Varney is great and they work really well together and he knows how to get uh the best out of him and he still shows that here and in, in the scenes with Ernest that are genuinely funny like the sequence involving the power tools that come to life and uh the scenes involving Ernest on the runaway cannon and those are moments where okay you see that that bit of uh energy and that that bit of a jovial jaunty uh spirit that was present in the other Ernest films, but in this film, it just feels like it's few and far between more often than not. And there's a lot of sequences that aren't really that funny. And some of the physical comedy is, is hurt by that. And it also doesn't help that I don't think he's getting consistently good performances by everybody in the cast, particularly uh, the film's uh, co-star. But I think it's not necessarily Jim, uh, a, a, uh, a director issue. It might be an issue with the, the cast. It might just be that Ron James is just not really that good of a comedian. So you just can't really get much more out of him than what uh, Cherry did. But yeah, it's just one of those movies where the, di the direction of it is competent. It's okay. It's serviceable, but it's nothing particularly special. It's not great, and it could be a lot better. And it is something that just seems a little stagnant at, at times and way too often for me, especially when it comes to an earnest movie. It, it just didn't necessarily have the same uh, uh, spirit to it uh, that the other Ernest films did and didn't have the same variety in terms of the camera angles and the, the perspectives and a lot of that other stuff. And what's crazy is like the budget was 3 million, which is comparable to the budget for the other Ernest films, but it just doesn't look like that is on the screen at all. So yeah, it's just one of those movies where I think the, the direction is also an example of diminished returns. I think John Cherry had kind of really reached the point here with these Ernest movies where he had done as good of a job as he was going to do, and it was just really downhill from here. Uh, the screenplay is by John Cherry and William M. Akers, and the script is very much a mixed bag. Like, it's not a terrible screenplay, but... There are a lot of things about it that don't really work for me. For one, I know this is kind of petty, but the title just isn't, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense compared to the other Ernest films. Uh, Ernest Rides Again, it's not that catchy. And also, what is what does that even mean? Especially when it comes to the plot of this film that involves some revolutionary war canon and some hidden crown of jewels that apparently would uh, reveal that the crown of England that's in England is a fake and would unravel British history. It's like one of those things you're like, uh, okay, that's definitely a direction to take with the Ernest franchise. Not necessarily the direction that I would have taken, but okay, all right. 
And having a buddy dynamic isn't a bad idea either. I just don't think it's very well executed because the the buddy that Ernest works off of and Dr. Abner Mellon, I don't think is that strong of a character, at least to me personally. And I think with a buddy film, you also need to have a capable antagonist. And I didn't really feel that way about Dr. Radnor T. Glencliffe either. So it's just one of those things where the script is lacking in some key areas. And a lot of it involves characters. And I know characters were was not necessarily the biggest strong, strong suit for these Ernest films. But it's starting to become glaringly more obvious that it's a weakness when it comes to Cherry and, and his writing. And while I think the, the concept of the runaway cannon and the, the crown jewels is kind of out there, it's at least somewhat interesting and different, so I give it that. But as a comedy script, it definitely leaves a lot to be desired, except for some genuinely funny moments like the sequence uh at the um the construction site where Ernest is getting attacked by power tools that was pretty funny uh the the, the scene involving the runaway cannon uh I, I enjoyed that especially the moment where Ernest is rolling on the cannon and he goes through this party this birthday party in the middle of a park and he's like ah Get out of the way! I don't want to kill anybody! Not even that bad mime! <laughs> like, like that, that was a really funny line of dialogue. And I don't know if that was just improvised by Jim Varney. It, it very well could have been. But if that was something that was there in the script, gotta give the writers kudos for that. But there's other stuff like Abner Mellon and his, his whole dynamic with Ernest. I didn't find it that endearing to me personally. I didn't really feel the two really clicked that well. And the whole stuff with him doing Elvis impersonations and being a karate guy was dumb. And speaking of dumb, you have this other subplot involving Abner's wife, who the way that she's written, I don't like this character. And the, and the script tries to make this character salvageable by the end. Uh, Nan, as if she has a change of heart, but it doesn't really feel that earned, at least to me personally, because you really don't think at all for one second that she genuinely loves Abner. She loves Abner as much as Adrian Barbeau's character in Creepshow loved her husband. You know, it's that kind of thing. And I, I just didn't didn't really buy the two being a a a, a couple that was at all anything that effective. It was just one of those things where the scenes with her dra really drug the film down for me because I didn't care for them because I don't like the character. And then you throw in these two twin vacuum... Now, they're not necessarily twins, but they're these two vacuum salesmen characters. And they were just too high energy, too high strung for my taste as if they were... Honestly, the kind of characters you would see in like an Alvin the Chipmunks cartoon from the 80s. And I just could not stand those characters. I didn't find any of their shtick funny. And they took up way too much of the runtime for me. And then you get the stuff with the villain who like I didn't really think was that great either. And it's just one of those films where yeah, there's some intrigue involving the plot in the Revolutionary War canon and trying to find the real crown jewels and so on. And there's some fun moments where the script is even self-aware when Ernest references that he's essentially a living cartoon. And there's some good moments for Ernest. And that that's the reason why the script is honestly as much of a mixed bag as it is and why it's not just a complete fail is because there are some really good moments for Ernest. And that's why I don't hate the script, 
but it's also another reason why the script is a bit of a letdown because the stuff with Ernest is not bad most of the time, but the stuff with the other characters, I don't think is really that good. So it's one of those things where Ernest is, for the most part, handled in a solid way and the writing is pretty efficient, but when it comes to the other characters, not so much. And I guess maybe that's that's more than serviceable for an Ernest movie. And definitely in comparison to some of the other Ernest sequels that came out after this. I mean, this isn't what I would consider to be a great film. I personally wouldn't even consider it to be that good of a movie. I think at best it's just kind of below average or, or average for me. I know there are people out there who enjoy it, and I can understand that because Jim Varney is really good in it, and the Ernest scenes that focus on Ernest are pretty decent. But I, at the same time, I just can't really say that I liked the film that much because of these issues with the script. And with some of the casting, like Jim Varney is definitely not a problem here. He's getting up there in age at this point, but he still has that same energy, that same uh uh charisma he still as lovable as ever even though he's just as dopey and still has good uh deadpan and 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 just still has everything that you want from uh, uh this character in terms of the performance you want him to be like an energizer bunny you want him to have that manic energy you want him to be able to have that likable charisma that that Varney brings to the role that makes him a, a, a personable uh, character despite how annoying and, and dumb he can be sometimes because there's a certain earnestness to it and 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 you know, it was this lovable yokel and you want him to be able to still show all that range with his his uh, physical features and with his uh, facial expressions and you still get that. And I do think that Jim Varney's performance in this is pretty uh, great for as average or as below average as this film is at times. Ron James, though, on the other hand, is Dr. Abner Mellon. I, I, I could not get into. I thought the guy was pretty uh, uh, poor. I didn't think he had that good of chemistry with... Uh, with uh, Jim Varney, I didn't think he was funny. I definitely don't feel that he was funny at all. Like I didn't feel any of his dynamic with Ernest was really that fun for me. And the stuff would just feature him, where Ernest is off doing his own thing or whatever at times, was pretty painful to sit through for me. Um, the guy reminded me of Tim Kazurski who was an actor who was in SNL and some other uh, films here and there, or like a cast member of a, a mad TV or SNL knockoff that lasted for like one season. Like that, that's really what he reminded me of like a lesser uh, a sketch comedy performer. Uh, Tom Butler he was there as the villain, Dr. Radner, T D, uh, T Glencliff. Like, the guy was not intimidating, but it's also an earnest film. So, you know, that's that's not necessarily something that is a requirement. But it does help. I mean, the scenes with Lyle as Ado and Goes to Camp were definitely strong. And so was the stuff with Trantor and Scared S uh, Stiff. Um, but... The guy just seemed like a pushover to me. Like I never really bought him as as any any sort of like intimidating presence. Uh and also like the way the guy played the character is very one note as if as if you know he was just like your average like dentist. Like I don't know what it was. Like he just gave me dentist vibes. You're like a high end dentist. Like you you go to get your teeth cleaned by this guy once a year. You know that kind of thing. Um, Linda Cash, I, I thought was definitely not money as, as Nan. Uh, I, 
I did not like that performance. I didn't like that character. I thought she was shrill. I thought she was annoying. Um, then you had some other actors and actresses, but really not much. Surprisingly, Gaylord Sartain is not in this, and neither is Bill Burge. And I, I was really surprised why those two were not in this film. I, I, I probably would have liked it more if those two were involved more. Like, why wasn't this a buddy film with Gaylord Sartain? and jim varney with bill burge hanging uh, uh, tagging along like that would have been better uh at least to me personally it features cinematography by david Geddes and it's edited by craig bassett but the technical aspects of this are very uh low no low rent and and uh very cheap just like the majority of the production it's not very impressive um the music by bruce arnston and kirby shellstad very stock just the type of uh, music you would typically hear in a low budget goofy comedy uh nothing that original or memorable except for the earnest theme like there's a song that they played i think in the opening credits uh that even had like a bouncing ball over the lyrics and that was not bad like i thought that was pretty catchy and that was that was fun but other than that like the music for the most part was pretty much nothing and it's like 96 minutes but this time around it, it definitely does feel more tired and more played out compared to the other previous films at least to me personally um but yeah it's one of those movies where and I know I said it's the sixth Ernest film. It's technically the fifth, but the first Ernest movie was this other gloom beam film, like I mentioned in one of my other Ernest reviews. Um, and I'm, I was going off of Wikipedia, and I just I just realized that now. Where I'm like, wait a second, this is really the fifth film, because Ernest was just there in like a scene or two in the in the the gloom beam movie. Um, and this is better than the gloom beam movie, but that's not really saying much. It's just, and this is a hell of a lot better than Ernest goes to Africa or Ernest and the army, uh, or even slam dunk Ernest. Um, and I haven't seen goes to school in a while, so it might be better than that too, but it's just one of those things where, yeah, it's not that great. It's kind of forgettable. And I really wouldn't recommend it unless you're a diehard fan of Ernest and Jim Varney. But if you are into Ernest and you do like Jim Varney and you you want to see a, a, a good performance by him, then this is definitely worth a watch, uh, even with all of its limitations, because Jim Varney is 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 a, is a gem in this. I just wish it was a much better movie. But anyway, thanks for watching my review of Ernest Rides Again. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.